German Chancellor Scholz is visiting China. Janet Yellen gives Beijing a stern lecture about its economic practices. And the U.S. may ease warnings to Americans visiting China. And more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. Now, you probably know that companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, maybe hundreds, most of which you've never heard of, and you have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps stop them. I'll explain more at the end. As we mentioned last week, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is visiting China. Yellen is there because the White House wants the CCP to change its economic and production policies, which is ridiculous because China's economy is doing great. It's like they don't read China-approved news sources or something. In particular, the U.S. and other countries aren't happy about China's state-subsidized industrial overcapacity, especially of electric vehicles and solar panels, which is wrecking global prices. Yellen acknowledged that these talks, which have been ongoing for a decade, are not likely to result in anything concrete soon. But darn it, she's going to keep trying. Because doing the same thing and expecting different results is the definition of, I don't remember, but I assume it's a good thing. And speaking of keeping on trying, she's also pointed out that these conversations will continue later this month at the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank Group meetings in Washington, D.C. While the talks were deemed by both sides as constructive, the Internet is more concerned with Yellen's love of Chinese food and how well she handled her chopsticks, which shows you exactly how seriously people take Yellen and these discussions. Not that I can blame them. After all, the talks have been ongoing for a while with not much to show for it. But at least this time around, if we're talking about Yellen and Bows, we're talking about these kind, and not the bow she gave a dictator the last time she was there. But why should anyone treat Yellen's trip seriously when the U.S. is considering easing travel warnings for Americans who want to visit China? Because China ramping up detaining foreign businessmen at random with no real explanation can only mean one thing. Beijing is a perfect spring vacation spot. Deputy Secretary of State Kurt Campbell said that the White House is concerned that people-to-people -people exchanges have been curtailed by the travel warnings. He then also acknowledged that there are concerns about Chinese citizens joining migrant flows heading into the U.S. from the Mexican border. In other words, the U.S. is aiming not to curtail people-to-people -people exchanges between Chinese and American citizens by possibly lifting a travel warning right after news broke detailing concerns about Chinese hacking of U.S. elections. And right as migrants from China are pouring in through the southern border. And the best idea to counter this coming from the White House is to send Janet Yellen for long talks and a taste of China? I guess it could be worse if she's going to visit dictators. At least she's not doing a wine tasting with Vladimir Putin. And after the break, China isn't finished challenging the U.S. on the world stage. Welcome back. Despite saying that there were constructive talks between Yellen and her Chinese counterparts, the CCP is furious with the U.S. Why? Because it conducted a massive joint naval drill with the Philippines in the South China Sea yet again. Which is outrageous. I mean, what kind of insecure world leader would insist on holding military drills near another country? Like, let's say, Taiwan. Hypothetically, of course. This time, Australia and Japan joined in. So China decided to respond in kind. This then escalated into a war of words, with China's statement saying all military activities that disrupt the South China Sea and create hot spots are under control. While that's more BS than a manure factory, let's let them tell themselves this so we can keep this a war of words instead of a war of, you know, blowy, uppy things. And the U.S., Japan, Australia, and the Philippines replied by reaffirming their stance on the 2016 International Arbitration Ruling, which found that the CCP's claims on the South China Sea were invalid. Given how petty China is, I'm surprised Xi Jinping hasn't licked the South China Sea and said, want it now? Xi Jinping didn't stop there, either. He decided to hold a meeting with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and skipped out on the wine, I assume. In the meeting, Lavrov expressed gratitude for China's diplomatic and economic support for Russia after the West imposed heavy sanctions on the Kremlin for invading Ukraine. Lavrov then said he admired all that China had accomplished in the decades since she came to power. Hmm. You mean like that pandemic that severely affected Russia right before its poorly planned war on Ukraine? 
To be fair, Russia's crazy and shady enough to see that and go, game respect game. Lavrov and Xi both agree to oppose any international efforts that ignore Russian positions. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, who also attended the meeting, stressed that the two countries would continue their bilateral relations and joint international efforts, despite past strains on the relationship and the West's attempts to isolate Moscow and Beijing. So the CCP's response to a solid pro-Western alliance is to cozy up further with the dictator of a distracted and heavily sanctioned country. A country, mind you, whose military has taken a severe and unexpected beating and with a demographic crisis nearly as bad as China's. Unsurprisingly, that doesn't seem to be intimidating the democratic world very much. In fact, President Biden just announced the creation of a joint air defense system with Japan and Australia. Not to be outdone, Taiwan is also seeking deeper defense ties with the U.S. Taiwan's Navy commander, Admiral Tang Hua, recently visited Maryland, where he pointed out that in light of increasing Chinese aggression in both the South and East China Seas, more countries were looking to deepen their ties with Taipei and Washington. Taiwan is also hosting war games, simulating what would happen if one of China's many offshore drills were to turn into a blockade or invasion. Taipei's annual war games will integrate several parts of the military to form a sea-based attack and kill chain. Which is good, because a year ago, China held a drill off of Taiwan practicing a blockade around the island. And just last week, after speaking on the phone with President Biden, she sent dozens of warships and military planes around Taiwan. Yeah, I can't wait for that people-to-people -people communication. Really gonna change things. But there's even more bad news for Xi Jinping. I'll tell you right after the break. Welcome back. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is headed to China to meet Xi Jinping. The visit is supposed to be very important. Many large German companies view relations with Beijing, which is Germany's largest trading partner, as critical. The economy isn't doing so well, but there is a lot of pressure on the German government to reduce its dependence on China. Another reason the meeting is important is that right now, China is protesting an EU investigation of Chinese EV exports to the old continent, which the CCP fears could end in tariffs, something that Schultz is usually skeptical about. It'll be his second visit to China, where he's due to visit Shanghai and Chongqing, in addition to his Beijing meeting with Xi. But Xi isn't likely to find much comfort in the tariff-skeptical Schultz. Germany is upset about China's economic and diplomatic support for Russia. This is supposed to come up in talks with Xi alongside Chinese aggression in the South China Sea. But tariffs might be the least of Xi's potential worries, though. China Tianroi Group Cement Company Limited shares fell 99% on April 9th. The crash happened in just 15 minutes following a sell-off that wiped out almost all of its market shares. So it's no wonder that ratings agency Fitch downgraded China's debt outlook. Fitch thinks this year is on track to have the highest government deficit since 2020, when the pandemic was going on. According to the agency, there's been a big deficit leap from last year. Naturally, the CCP responded with denial, saying Fitch's methodology fails to reflect the positive role of fiscal policy in promoting economic growth, and that the long-term positive trend of China's economy has not changed nor has the Chinese government's ability and determination to maintain good sovereign credit, aka quit measuring things with math and reality and start thinking positively. Trust in communism. It's always worked out so well. Now I've got a video to show you that I think Xi Jinping should really watch, a video about leadership. But first, this episode is sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything online or use apps on your phone, there are tons of companies to collect your personal data. When I signed up for Incogni, I discovered there were dozens of data brokers that had my private information without my permission. So remember earlier I mentioned that the U.S. is concerned about China hacking elections? China can hack our elections. You don't think they can hack all your personal data you accidentally left on weaboobarn.com? I swear I was on there strictly for research purposes. This is why you should avoid letting websites collect your personal data. Probably you know that now, but you've been on the internet for what, 10, 20 years, more? Maybe your first internet experience was getting 500 free hours of America Online in 1999, so you could look at pictures of Japanese body pillows. For research purposes only? Well, that's how long unscrupulous companies have been trying to collect your personal data, to sell you more home warranties, even if you can't afford a house, or 
even for more nefarious purposes. So what can you do? Get as many of these companies as possible to delete your data from their systems. That's what Incogni does for you. Incogni has already gotten my details removed from 207 of these data brokers who've collected my info. And I didn't have to do anything after signing up. Incogni just handles it. So I recommend you get Incogni for yourself and reclaim your own data. Go to incogni.com slash uncensored and use the code uncensored to get 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. And here's that video I want to share with you about how a good leader really should act, something I think she could stand to learn a thing or two about. I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.